Welcome! In honor of Lime Life's seventh birthday, Gary and I thought it would be super fun to bring Madison and Michelle, our co-founders and co-CEOs of Lime Life, into the studio so that we could ask you some questions. And I'm really excited because we are always working, right? We don't get to kind of hang out and talk and hear some of the old stories. So for me, it's really special to be here with you guys. Thank you, because I know you're busy. <laughs> so we're all really we're excited. excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So what do you want to start? Jump in. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, OK. Dive right so in. <laughs> the water is great. We established. You want me to ask the question? <laughs> Take the lead. OK. So you know, we know that Lime Life is, you know, you guys started as a family business, and you're founded in family values. Uh, wow. How did you choose the MLM model, right? Like, what got you there, and what made the decision for you to start the business that way? Yeah, it really was out of the idea of community. Mm -hmm. and. What we wanted to do was to create something for pro makeup artists. It originally was an idea for pro makeup artists. And my sister, Marette, her auntie, um, has MS and she's a pro makeup artist. So, you know, when I looked at what her career journey was going to be, eventually she wasn't really going to be able to do mm. her craft. And so many makeup artists go through this. And I thought, you know what, why don't we create another revenue for them so that while they're doing their career of makeup artistry, they're also creating this um, sales revenue stream. And so we we started sort of cooking that up and, and looking at sales commission. And, you know, we're a small family business, so it was like, well, I can't manage all these people. What if 10,000 people join? Like, how are we going to do this? And we're like, all right, well, we have to do it where they're sort of in these leadership pods. And how would you do that? And how would you compensate the leaders for inspiring people and teaching them how to have this revenue stream? And we were at a direct sales model. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> like, all the, all the anti MLM yeah, yeah, thought went yeah. through my head. And yeah. I was like, let's, let's cook this up again. Yeah. I know we can come up with something different. And we just, every time we kept cooking it up, it kept coming back to this. And finally, I had to just stop myself and say, what is it I'm resistant to? Yeah. Mm. This makes all the sense in the world. But, so why am I resistant to it? And it really was just a lot of misconceptions and all of that. Mm. And, and you know, we're starting to see people understand that that's just something that it's like a cemented misconception that when they break, yeah. they go, oh, wait a minute, this does make sense. It's flexible, work from home, work your own hours, work it how you want to, make it authentic, fold it into something else you have or make it your own career. It really does offer people an, an amazing path of hope. It really does. Yeah. yeah. And it really started as a discount slash referral program for professional makeup artists. Yeah. And that was the message at the time. It was like, fold this into your makeup artistry yeah. through Alcone, Alcone at home. And the people that were really gravitating towards it were the people who knew nothing about makeup. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was like the second we started talking to them is when things started to take off. Yeah. Um, and Mary so, Kay Kemper was yeah. like, I'm not a pro, but I really want to do this. Right. Like, yeah. I, you know, I think this makes all the sense of the world. She just had the vision right away. And I'm like, no, it's not restricted to pros. But in my mind, I also had the other misconception that how can you go to a party and sell makeup and teach makeup if you don't have a professional background? And the answer is you absolutely can because yeah. the makeup really performs better um, than something you can buy on the, on the open consumer market. So it's, it's actually easier for consumers to do. And you put your makeup on the way that you right. want yeah. to look that day. Um, now that's not to negate really great pro makeup artists because their craft, they're amazing at it. But for the everyday woman who's doing it every, you know, every morning in her, in her bathroom, yeah. It, it does make like a lot of sense. Why does great professional makeup have to be for special occasions? Exactly. Yeah. I love that. It sounds like you really started with the why and then figured out, you know, the how and the what. And that's how you landed, you know. And that's how sales. everyone should figure out their future. Everyone should ask the why and then say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how much money I need to fund that, that future of myself. How am I going to backfill and create that? that monetary stream to allow me to have that future. And we don't do that. People don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's true. They kind of just go through the life and then, first yeah, and like then... wish at one point that they'd hit the lottery or whatever. Meanwhile, yeah. if they just did a little bit every single day, they'd have that future that they wanted. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm super curious, what were some of the biggest obstacles that you faced early on? How much time do we have? <laughs> um, do we have time? <laughs> Where, first obstacle, uh, we couldn't really properly print our invoices. Yeah, the, I mean, I mean, I, you know, okay. Technical. Hold on, because I think it's important that people, because when I hear you yeah. guys talk about this, I, 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 I'm just like, what? Because you know, I came in when you guys were already established oh. in some ways, but you guys were like two people in a room, three yeah. people in a room, like you guys were like packing boxes and doing the, like all of that stuff. Like it's really important that people understand that this really did start as a tiny yeah. little thing. This was our day grew. job. I it mean, was, we had a yeah. day job. Okay. And then this was our nighttime moonlighting, me going to parties, I Madison was a full packing. time college student yeah. slash working at Alcone <laughs> and li like Alcone at home limelight was after hours until I graduated. Wow. wow. So it was like, and we, we had just any problem you can think of, any yeah. problem you could think of, but we didn't see it as a problem. It was so fun, like looking back. It was. I mean, honestly, it was, it was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> but like looking back, it was. She was so having fun. a ball. Like at night, packing boxes, they were listening to Salt and Pepper. I was trying to put my kids to bed who right. were babies and, and, you know, like get an hour of sleep and work on the other business. And, but it was really it was, fun. It was if fun. I didn't have Madison, I, you know, it would have been impossible. Well, I just had like energy and I was like, I was okay, like, to like we're going to learn how to do old. this. We're going to do this. <laughs> but uh, we Even literally. Even today, you have that sense of possibility, like, you know, if some, if we don't know how to do something, if we have a problem and we don't know how to solve it, Madison is like going everywhere to every resource. Yeah. She's teaching herself how to do it. I mean, for example, there are, are beauty brands that have these giant regulatory departments and how do you register products and how do you do that? And, and we were, we were working on that and Madison's like, they're not moving fast enough. So she spent like an afternoon figuring out the process of registering products. And she's wow. like, the all internet. right. You can learn anything <laughs> on the internet, really. I mean. yeah. You are the, I feel like you are the calm in the storm always. Like, like Michelle and I will go like. My husband <laughs> would disagree. <laughs> and Madison's like, okay, yeah. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I just like, <laughs> I like solving problems. Like, I feel like our best things have always come yeah. from a yeah. problem. Yeah, you're not um, afraid to die. Like you, yeah. you're really not afraid to discover what gives birth out of a, a, a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really was like we were doing pretty much everything. Yeah, like we would change our names for customer service. Like, hi, this is Emily. <laughs> How can I help you? No, like, I never did. That. <laughs> yes, we did. I didn't. You did. Okay, I did. <laughs> Then they think you can pull strings for them when like you don't want to pull strings. So you're like, okay, I'm Emily right now. No, I was the worst because I'd be like, hi, it's Michelle. And they're like, is this Michelle? Exactly. Like in the catalog? And I'm Michelle, like, yeah. Michelle? They're like, can we do this? I'm like, absolutely. Let's take care of it. And then the customer care agents are like, really? Which was like, like one person at the yeah, time. Yeah, we yeah. Really, this was when we didn't she's have still a with customer. us. Yes, but mm -hmm. all of our, uh, all of our, people our OGs. Yeah, yeah, but it, like it was so fun. We were in this room with my other Aunt Maria. Mm. Like just three of us in a tiny little room with our offices, and then the fulfillment room, which was this big, as the space we're sitting in, was where we packed our boxes. We, we had to pick bows on every package. Wow. Every single package. That bow is, is a nod that is on yes. our boxes to the fact that we tied bows on every single collection. Yeah. We wanted everything to be like a gift, and this was really like, the beauty industry was evolving, mm -hmm. like as we were doing this, and the expectations were getting higher, and we wanted to try to level ourselves up as much as we can to be yeah. a part of that, um, even if with just tying bows on yeah. boxes and then carrying them down a really dangerous flight of stairs to the shipping <laughs> table. <laughs> but to get back to your original point, Madison. Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Madison really is the calm. She's very, very thoughtful. She's resourceful. She's really emotionally centered in, in how she proceeds forward. And I, I actually get a lot of inspiration from this because if you don't, if you don't center yourself before you make yeah. strategy or decisions or whatever, you, you make decisions out of emotion and then you can mislead people. Um, and you know, I'm like the passionate 
Italian aunt. She's like the calm. <laughs> I just like to be realistic too. Like, I, like this is she where is. I feel like we are also like a really good yin and yang, mm -hmm. where it's like you do dream big. Like you like to go big and like with the big ideas. And I'm like, okay, I love that idea. Here's what's really gonna happen. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Welcome to my life. And then when Gary <laughs> came, it was great. I was like, I was like, I feel like I have an ally in this realistic. I'm like, how are we gonna do that? And then she'll go and announce it before. I'm like, uh, okay, I'll figure that out. <laughs> Every time I go into the office, picture this. Yes. <laughs> Our meetings start with like, okay, hear me out. <laughs> it's so like, true. I'm like, okay, come to me. Okay, no judgment, just listen to the vision. Just, just, yeah. You know, breathe through it. Just and then everyone's out. like, and we're pulling back Michelle's vision but into it, reality. But it works though. It's literally yin and yeah. yang. And I feel like that's been like how we have gotten this far yeah like, with dreaming big but keeping it real yeah yeah and what like really stands out to me when you were sharing your early journey with lime life is that it really echoes the journey of many of our beauty guides yeah. because most of them are doing this in conjunction with another job yeah. some other side hustle maybe two or three jobs and they're fitting it in at night, they're doing it on the weekends, they're doing it on their break, and, right. and just like you guys figured it out, they're figuring it out and you know scaling as they go, so it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. It's like there is, like, if there is a will, there is a way. Yeah. Like, and your priorities, whatever your priorities are, will lead you to, like, in college, like, was my priority to like socialize and have fun or be a part of this? And my priority was this. Like, would I have ever guessed that for myself? Ten. Mm. years ago yeah hard now yeah probably yeah. you know like if you're like oh no I'd be partying over that for sure yeah. but yeah and I think yeah. it's what makes you guys great leaders really because and and I think why so many people really love working with you working for you um, working for the company that you lead you you're really connected to that initial struggle like that you know like you 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 built this and so you know you're not sitting in an ivory tower not connected to like no 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 we we were there in the beginning yeah. you still are you guys are still very hands on and, yeah. and um there isn't i mean even in the team like there's no sense of hierarchy there's no sense of titles like you know yeah. you're you have a anyone can come talk to you any one of you always um so it's really special we um, think a little <laughs> bit of the people who were here early on they saw us moonlighting they saw us working the day. They yeah. saw us at the warehouse at night packing boxes. They saw us on Saturdays and Sundays working. And so they sort of adopted and were inspired by that work ethic. Mm -hmm. And now they, I think a lot of beauty guides have a sense that we've arrived. Mm -hmm. and we don't work those mm -hmm. hours, mm -hmm. you know, like, but we do. Yeah. Um, it, it's just shifted because a lot of the work that we were doing um, we different. now have teams for, yeah. you know, yeah. and you want that yeah. because that's how you scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I still feel like we're just scratching the surface though. Yeah. Like I still feel like that same way, like I don't even think we're close to anywhere we're going. Like yeah. I really do feel like we're still in the trenches, you know, like. And you and I both have a very strong sense of urgency. I mean, I yeah. still feel that sense of urgency that yeah. I did from day same. one. Yeah. Wow. You're kind of ruining my next question. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, well, why don't we answer that? <laughs> you're, you're ruining my setup. Um, <laughs> well, there had to be a moment when you kind of realized, okay, we made it. We got something here. Like maybe not have arrived, but like, hey, <laughs> like <laughs> this is working, you know? Like what, when, when did that moment happen for you guys? I don't know that it actually has for me. Um, yeah, we're both overachievers uh -huh. and we're restless and w these are our saboteurs and we're trying to get good at that and I'm trying to acknowledge milestones like the seventh birthday, mm -hmm. yeah. like the partnership with L'Occitane, um, like the fact that yeah. our beauty guide Priscilla just sold a million dollars in personal sales. Like these okay. milestones, every time someone breaks the ceiling and shows us a you know, a higher sense of possibility, which so many beauty guides have. Yeah. You know, I, I, I take those moments in now, um, but I don't think we have even come close to achieving what, what we were supposed to do. Like my divine purpose that I feel yeah. is not even like if I was an activity ring, I'd be like right here. <laughs> There's a lot more to do. I don't know. If no, no I do too. Cause I, I can't think of this like moment where I was like, yep, your first million, we did your it. first, like it was there. No, because it was always so interesting that you say that because we actually set that 
marker uh -huh. in oh, our mind. Like there was one where we said, the minute our sales are higher than this, our our family businesses uh -huh. that have been around for decades, yeah. we're going to feel this sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And we actually went like three months before we even acknowledged that. Uh -huh. And I was like, Mads, we did it. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have that other, you know, like that. It's always like, like when we do 100,000 in sales, like we're going to pop champagne. And then we did it. And then we kept going. And it's like, okay, when we do like 500,000 in sales, we'll pop champagne. And then we didn't. Yeah. I don't, I still don't think, we, well, no, we did. <laughs> I think we did at one point finally stop and pop champagne, but it was like, that we're just always pushing the finish line further, yeah. and I, I just don't, I don't think we're here yet. The, like, thing I don't that, the thing I loved is our stat on how much we've paid out to beauty guides over time. Yeah. That was one where we calculated that, and I was like, oh my gosh, this number is real. And like, I was really proud of that. Yeah. I mean, when you sit down and list out everything, and you're like, wow, but then at the same time, you're also thinking so far into the future and what it's going to be. Yeah. That it's like it already feels like yeah. we're ready for the next milestone. I don't is know. Is that horrible to be on our yeah. staff that where we never stop and say we did it? It, it keeps us busy, I'll say that. <laughs> 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 well, I think I think if you're a person that's driven by impact, which I know the two of you are, I think it can be difficult to say that because there's always more impact yeah. Yeah. that you can see available. Um, to have out in the world. And so I think, like, I love that you're being intentional about stopping and celebrating those wins because I don't think there's there's a finish line, yeah. you know, yeah. but that doesn't mean you can't smell the roses along yeah. the way. And like I had one happened. moment even the other day where I was like, it seems like everyone on the home office team, the whole staff is doing a really good job in their role. Like everyone is taking such responsibility and, you know, owning their position. And it, it's really comforting to know yeah. that we have yeah. such good people in each position. Yeah. And everyone is happy and creative and like yeah. it, coming off of a pandemic when everyone's like, yeah. you know, this space feeling attracts away. great people. Mm. And it's yeah. funny because we, we ha our hiring process is really casual. Like it's not like, right. you know, we, we love to bring in our people and our connections, but it really works for us because we attract really, I mean, a really amazing team. Everybody loves to do the work yeah. and is really committed to it. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and that I, extends to our beauty guide fields. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the people that we have as independent business owners, you know, independent sales contractors, beauty guides, I mean, they're just incredible. And, yeah. and I think that that comes, you know, from the top down. Yeah, I yeah. Think, you know. yeah. But I, I was on the phone with HR the other day and I was like, everyone, I, I just like, like need to let you know, everyone is in such a good place right now. I <laughs> sense it, I feel it. Like, I know it's been tough, yeah, but, touch anything. but like, <laughs> I really like knock on wood, wherever wood is, but I'm like, it's really, it's so much easier to work and for yeah. everyone to be creative. But anyways, my point was, I felt like that was a good, moment. like moment, like mm. a mi almost like a milestone, but yeah. not. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's something you expect to have, but like, it's not always the case. No, yeah. so true. Yeah. So speaking of making a difference, I mean, if you were to look back at Lime Life in year one and now Lime Life in year seven, what would you say the biggest difference is between, you know, what the company used to be and what the company is now? And, and I'm curious, even for yourselves, how do you see yourself as being different now mm. than you were back then? Wow. So the company, <laughs> the company seven years ago versus today. I mean, we were a mess. I think yeah. it's really important for people to understand this. Like, <laughs> like we have systems. I actually, I actually, I actually almost brought our original palettes um, to this so that people could see because I think it's important for you guys to understand. Um, and I love when leaders post their first video that they ever made or their yeah. first selfie yeah, that yeah, they yeah, ever yeah. posted yeah. so that people can see you don't just arrive it's a journey yeah. and if you're the one thing i will say is that we never stopped moving because things weren't perfect mm -hmm. yeah. like i never was like okay all of our eyeshadows are cracking on shipment which they were let's let's just stop what we're doing mm -hmm. um we just kept moving we kept bringing the customer into the process and like this is a learning thing for us thank you so much mm -hmm. um and then they became embedded in the community um so for, for me 
It was looking at where I wanted the company to be, branding, quality, systems, organization, in the beginning and saying, we're not even close to this, mm -hmm. but keep, keep moving, Michelle, you're gonna get there. So here we are seven years later, and I feel like the vision of what I wanted us to be on that first day is so much better and bigger than where we are now. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you, I mean, so I would imagine when you started this, the Brighter Together wasn't part of it. Oh, no. The Vampire Fund wasn't no. part of it. No. Right? So None right of that. there, I feel like, you know, you, you and, I mean, you're like an evil genius with ideas. Like, you just, like, keep cooking them up, so. We didn't have skincare. Yeah. yeah. We only yeah. had 20 SKUs. Wow. And I think that's important for the beauty guides now to understand is that yeah. our original beauty, beauty guides built their business on 20 SKUs, no catalog, a website that barely worked and had absolutely no flair or appeal yeah. and no customer follow-up. Like everything that they have now, the original beauty guides yeah. did not I have. That's the biggest thing, like the resources available now compared to day one are like literally zero to 100. Like they literally had yeah. zero resources. Like but they that's when they came together yeah. and they were like, okay, this is all we have to work with. How do we create possibility from only this? Right. And that's where the collaboration of the Fempire actually started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just being struck with this thought of they knew that success had to come from within because it was all they had. Right. Yeah. And I wonder hmm. if, <laughs> if we sometimes having all of these resources has enabled them to not see the magic inside themselves mm. because they rely on the resources, not their own magic. Yeah. Don't yeah. tap into the tools now. If I know. Tools they tap designed. into the tools, they don't tap into themselves. Right. Yeah. Tools can't create magic or real connections or. You know, the things, the secret sauce. Yeah. Or yeah. real change in yourself, which is yeah. a part of the reason why the journey is important. The change of the journey is important because then, you know, it's like getting to that mountaintop and then seeing a new valley for yourself. And then you get to the next mountaintop and there's another valley. When you're down at the bottom, you don't know that that valley is possible for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep changing and yeah. creating possibility for Sometimes you. you don't even see there's another valley up no. there until you get high enough to go, oh, there's a whole other world back there. Exactly. That can, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's great. Um, so as entrepreneurs, one of the things that can entrepreneurs can often deal with is this imposter syndrome. I think you kind of alluded to because you're never, this idea of never arriving and always striving. Is that something you guys deal with, imposter syndrome at all? And if, and if it is, how do you deal with it? How do you manage it? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone feels that way sometimes. They mm -hmm. might not admit it, but it's like, especially in the beginning where it was, you know, just us. Yeah. And I'm a college student that really has no experience in the real world yet. Like, I'm like, I have to literally fake it till I make it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sound like I know what I'm doing so that people think I know what I'm doing. Um, and that was a big part of, I, I think, how I learned a lot of the things that I did along the way. Um, and Google. Google. Google <laughs> helps a lot with that. Um, but I think it's also part of how I've developed as a leader too because mm -hmm. anyone on my team, like if they are, it's their first job, whatever it is, like I want them to know it's okay to, you know, not know what you're doing and to ask <coughs> questions and yeah. to figure yeah. things out and Sometimes, like, I, I love throwing people into situations where they don't know what they're doing now because that's what I had to do all the time. Yeah. Like, I, there was yeah. a lot of things I didn't want to do. Like, I did not want to do them, but I had to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is something that everyone should go through. And it really helps along the way. Listen up. It's really, like, I tell It's not all cupcakes and bubblegum. I mean, <laughs> entrepreneurialism is not cupcakes and bubblegum. No. But if you yeah. understand that sometimes you have to wade through the mud and, and get to that other place, yeah. Yeah. like, do it. Just do yeah. it and stop complaining about it. Stop standing there in front of the mud yeah. and, and overthinking it. Just go through it and get to that yeah. other side. I always say there's no better training ground. Like, you yeah, know, the real world. I mean, maybe being a parent, I would imagine that's a <laughs> bit of a training ground. But, like, because you have to, there's so many, and, and it's not just, like, 
learning your skill set. You know, you got to learn the products, you got to learn how to market yourself, you got to learn finance, you got to learn. So you right. get confronted and challenged in so many different lanes. So I love the training that comes from it and the growth that comes yeah. from it. But you have to do the work. You have to. And then when you're like in a meeting and you're trying to figure out, I mean, something you totally know nothing about, you got to figure it out. Yeah. You got to figure it out because you have to and yeah. because there's people relying on you. I mean, I filed the corporate taxes for the first three years for us. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I don't even do my own personal taxes. And I had to, had to figure this out. And then, you know, three years later, I get a letter from the federal government like saying, hey, this is wrong. Here's your fine. And I'm like, I did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> the I tried the hardest the I could. <laughs> but like, that's the yeah. type of thing. And I remember being there night after night for weeks trying to figure out what does this term mean and how do I quantify it? And, you know, and you know, here's my husband who went to Harvard. He's like, well, I don't know. He, he has his MBA. He's like, I have no idea what this is. And I have no, like, so you get through those moments because yeah. you have to. Right. Yeah. Like issuing purchase orders. <laughs> like I literally <laughs> made purchase orders in, I didn't know what purchase orders. Word. I mean, I did through <laughs> did Word Alcone, but like I made a little purchase order form and I was like, okay, I'm going to order a hundred lip glosses. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the skew. <laughs> um, how much are these? Let me put that in. Okay. Um, and then like tracking, receiving, like receiving these packages. Yeah. Okay. I have to get my little PO, like yeah. trying to figure out these systems because we didn't have any. It was yeah. literally And now like, there's teams of and people now, who do yes, that. It's like, it, so I mean, like when we hired yeah, like Bob. to the point to the point now where like, we have our process of operations, we actually have it down to the tr the truck is arriving yeah. in this hour time slot and we we have a free bay and we have the staff waiting to unload the truck. Yeah. Like that's the level of sophistication that we wow. now from your word document to that is right. yeah. is, is how we've grown. I I'm I'm struck again about how much that echoes the journey of our beauty guide as well oh yeah you know mm -hmm. like he or she's coming here and most of them have never done anything like this before and they're having to figure things out for the first time they're having to do things on social media maybe that they've never done before they're having to interact with people in a new way and you know that's what i love is that you are a shining example and you know you both lead that way where if you don't know how to do it, as long as you have the desire and the commitment yeah. to jump in and mm -hmm. figure it out, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, that's what they're doing and that's what you're doing. And, you know, that's just part of being a successful entrepreneur. And, and part of it, too, is, you know, we didn't have a choice. There was right. no sitting down. When, the, when, we, when we hit go on the freight train, it was, ch we were chasing that thing. And there was not a moment to rest. And yeah. what I'm inspired by with our beauty guides is they can create that sense of urgency within themselves. Mm -hmm. And that to me is remarkable because I'm not totally sure I could do that. We had pressure. Yeah. We had to make it work. We were self-funding. We had the responsibility of the field. Mm -hmm. But when you're a beauty guide and you have to make it work for yourself and your family, mm -hmm. which is a lot. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a lot. That's important. It is pretty incredible that they're able to wake up every day and chew nails all day, grind it out, and then do the same thing the next day. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Okay, speaking of family, Michelle, I know you're a mom of three. Mm -hmm. And Madison, you just got married and mm -hmm. you are a dog mommy. Mm -hmm. And so tell us what you have learned about balancing work and life. It's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we balance it? People uh, ask us this question all the time and I'm like, when did this become like the buzzword, like balance, work-life work, balance. Work, work, <laughs> balance? I'm like, because it actually sets, I think, a lot of people up for failure. Yes, I really. Well, I was actually thinking about this today. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what you because thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was because I'm like, how are there people out there that like work full time jobs, have families to take care of, like their house is clean, like they work out. They I'm right shot. here, girl. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm like, how do people do it? And I'm like, I don't think people do. Like, no, I don't no. think people do that. No, anymore. and Instagram, it makes the illusion yes. even worse. It's yeah. horrible. So, so the real answer is, first, you have to, the people who you're responsible for. For me, it's my kids, my husband, 
they have to understand what you're doing and they ha there has to be consensus in your household mm -hmm. because they have to pick up the pieces when they fall apart and they can't guilt you into it. You know, guilt is a big part of it for a working mom. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be an, a common understanding that we're a team and we're working as a team. And mom's role in this team is to do a lot of this and you might have to make your breakfast and dinner and you might like, so that's number one I think is really important. Mm. The, the second one is work ebbs and flows. There, there are times when I'm working all night long. There are times when my day is a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So just roll with that. But the, the, the most important thing is when you are with your family, be completely present. Mm -hmm. My phone does not leave my office. I never check my phone, I'm like unless it's personal. Um, but I, when I'm out of my office, they have my full attention. Um, and I think the beauty guides know that. They're very good. They're very respectful of my boundaries. And if I don't get back to them right away on something and I'm doing it the next work day, they understand. It's because mm -hmm. I put real serious boundaries there. That's, I mean, that's one thing I feel like even in the early days I was always good at. Like, I am totally not checking my email on the yeah. weekends. After I'm done with a work day, like, I really can shut it down, which I think is good. And I know a lot of people cannot, cannot do that. Um, and that's one thing I've been happy that I've been able to do because, I mean, not every email needs to be answered right yeah. away, yeah. always. Like, I, it took me a while to learn that in the beginning, but then I'm like, okay, what's the worst that happens if I don't answer this yeah. till Monday or whatever? Yeah. Um, so if you find yourself not having a ritual, not prioritizing the people in your life that are the most important, and here's the thing, when I say prioritize, I don't mean that you have to pen I don't have to spend 16 hours with my kids a day for them to understand that my priority. Mm -hmm. But when I'm with them and they have my full attention, even if that's for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they feel that they're a priority. And I was at a training one time and I said, how many of you, when your children wake up and come downstairs and like when your kids are little and they're in their little pajamas with their crazy hair, I said, how many of them arrive to you looking at a device? And I said, think about what that feels like for them. Mm. Now, think about them coming down the steps with their little crazy hair in their jammies and they see you and you, good morning, you know, and, and you change that ritual of your day. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does that make them feel? And like that's, that's the choices you need to make and that's the sort of systems and rituals you need to put into place. Your boundaries and your rituals define the priorities for them. Definitely. Great. What's your favorite part? What's the favorite part of your job? Hmm. Oh gosh. Wow. I mean, honestly, like that's a lot. I I really like never feel like I'm working, which I think is how I've not burnt out or anything. Like I genuinely like doing it, and I don't dread working up, waking up every morning and having to go to work. Like I wake up and I'm like, oh, today's this day. Like this is what we're doing today. Um, so I like. I mean, I do really, I know it sounds so cheesy and probably like I'm lying, but I'm not. I really do love every part of my job, even the parts that are not so fun. Um, but probably, like, honestly, I love up with fun puns. puns. <laughs> <laughs> if you love so puns. So true, I really do. You when know, she gets a good, a good pun, pun, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. that's an immediate speed dial to me. Like, I just nailed this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, I just love a pun. Um, so, yeah. I love I love my time with the beauty guides. Yeah. That's my favorite part of the yeah. job. And I, I, and I don't part. get a lot of that. <laughs> I know. I it know. is true. It's so, like, when you're at the getaway. You and should get less. By everyone. Yeah. You should get left at this point because you have such a big team, but you, it's, I know. It's, such a, it's so filling for you to still it be is. connected to them. And it is. Lusa is really like energizing and makes you feel like you, like reminds yeah. you why we do what we do. Yeah. Palooza is a must. I mean, it is like fill your cup, overflow, overflow, get your reserves in, but yeah. even just yeah. Zooms with beauty guides and stuff and. Yeah. I always tell them, they're like, thank you so much. I'm like, are you kidding me? This was just as much fun for yeah, me exactly. as it was for you. Like, I, exactly. needed, I needed this too. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so let's now flip the coin <laughs> and look at the other side. <laughs> the worst. Yes. What do you struggle with the most? Or what's your, what's your least favorite part of what you do? 
finance. I mean, I, as soon as the finance guy comes down the hallway, I'm like, oh God, I got something over there. Uh, <laughs> I don't even hate it that much. Like, I think it's like a puzzle. It is a puzzle. And I do like the math behind it and all like, of that. I love math. But what I don't love about it is, and, and this is the real, you know, this is the real vulnerable answer. And, and sometimes you have to make really hard choices. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes that thing that you're desperate for, you can't, you can't put it in the budget yeah. or you can't do it or the sales go down and then you have to sort of rip out some of the things that you really were looking forward to and mm -hmm. you know I'm like I'm like Baruka from like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory I'm like I want this and I want it now you know <laughs> and then the finance guys like absolutely not that's not <laughs> happening um, but we had to learn that financial discipline when we we first started yeah. because we were self-funding so um, I think my least favorite part is just, you know, when something doesn't really go as planned. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I, th everything obviously doesn't go according to plan, but like when you think something is going to like this is kill gonna, it, yes. like be amazing and it falls flat, that's like probably. Wow, wow. And, and beauty guides feel that. They feel yeah. that all the time, yeah, just yeah. like us. That's entrepreneurialism. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. If you could only give three words of advice to a new beauty guide, what would they be? Three words of advice to a beauty guide. So just the words, the three of them. Yes. Hustle. How do you say like, don't make excuses and be a baby? <laughs> I can say that in a word. <laughs> no, because I think that's a really big part of it. I maybe yeah. it's grit. Yeah. Um, and like passion. Those are potentially three words that just off the top of my head come yeah. to mind. I'm gonna form mine into a sentence. Yes. Um, I thought that was the assignment. Oh, I didn't know they it. didn't okay. have the sentence. Okay. Um, see, our yin and yang here. <laughs> she came from Mine that would angle? be, uh, there's no limit. Like, there really is no limit to what you can do. Mm -hmm. And, like, don't think small. Like, maybe start thinking small, but that doesn't have to be the end-all, be-all. Like, yeah. what you can do with your Lime Life business is way beyond what's on the surface yeah. like money or you know community like you could really either change your life change someone else's life um or lots or, of someone else's or a lives. Lot, yeah lots of someone else's life yeah. like by giving this opportunity to someone else you could be changing their life their family's life it's really just crazy the ripple effect of um yeah ways that you can and think about this wi-fi and a device yeah that's it literally and you have the world at your fingertips yeah yeah so you can make the paycheck of your dreams or just you know meet good people yeah so true so it's february mm -hmm. and we're in connecticut mm -hmm. two facts give <laughs> us a glimpse um at your winter skincare and makeup routine what are the lime life products you just cannot live without right now Vats and vats of 40 care cream. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, I mean, we have, it's, that's the other thing that's interesting about us is we have two totally different skin types. Mm -hmm. So that makes it kind of fun for us to, you know, when yeah. we were, especially when we were formulating it, because I was like, Perfect fun. I love quench cleanse. And she's like, I love dream clean. Yeah, so dream clean. Um, everything is very, I have to have very hydrating stuff. Like that's huge and exfoliating for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my routine's pretty much the same all year round. Um, but in the winter, like I have a, a perfect bomb in every square inch of my house. Yes. Definitely. I literally, all, like yeah. literally everywhere. Like they're like little yeah, Easter yeah. eggs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and Brendan to the point, he's like, that's mine. And I'm like, how do you know it's yours? And he's like, I put a mark on the bottom. <laughs> like he labels his because I will take it and it will end up in my car. But I have my car lip balm and my yes. bag lip balm. Um, and the lip scrub is amazing. I. My my husband's like a constant lip, you know, yeah, perfect like bomb printer on her, and I'm like, just try this once, and he was blown away at how hydrating that was for him. I also glow in green toner pads because Oof. my skin gets really dry, and I just gotta, you know, shed my skin, yeah, a little winter snake, and that does the trick. Yeah, those are amazing. Yep. When it's a friend's birthday, what's your go-to gift for them? What Lime Life product do you like to gift the most? Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, that is such a good question because <laughs> I do have my go-to gift products. Well, for my friends, I know which products they like, so I know specifically what to give to them. 
Um, but honestly, the hand sanitizer has been a big oh. gift oh, really? for me. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. Okay. And like, they'll, my friends will keep it, you know, just in the front of their house because it yeah. looks cute on a counter, but it's also very functional. Um, and I've been really gifting the glowing green uh, toner that's, pads that's, and green smoothie. That's my go to yes. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say candles, are like, uh, just above, <laughs> above the age. I mean, it's a good it, it's But, a like, gift. do confidence, too, is one that I give a lot because um, when people use that, they're like, where has this been my whole life? Yeah. 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 Awesome. But also makeup products. I mean, obviously, like, the lip glosses make a perfect yeah. gift. Yeah. I always throw one of those in. Totally. Oh, yes. Like. Yes. I'm with, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> okay, so imagine you're blowing out some birthday candles on a birthday cake. Got it. What would your wish be for Lime Life this year? Ooh, I, well, you know, you know what mine are. <laughs> can't say them out loud. <laughs> what? Um, you can't say them out loud? Yeah. To get all my projects done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> but I think for me is this brand has so much integrity. It, it, it's every decision has been made with so much love and so much passion, and I I am really want us to win because I want to make a statement to the world that you can build something that is loving and caring and and matters and and win. Yeah. yeah, and I just want, I think my wish is to be the model of winning for a company that makes all the right choices for all the right reasons. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. my boss. That's powerful. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think exactly what you said to make, you know, Lime Life a brand that all our beauty guides can really be proud of yeah. and be like, that's my company. Yeah. Like that's the company that I align with and you should all get on board. Yeah. Like that's to be a household name, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. To be a household name where people are like, they changed the script. Yeah. Mm. You know? Um, because I, I really do think there's a lot of great companies out there that deserve to win. And I think there's a lot of companies that are winning that don't deserve to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a kind of a sad statement, but it's, it's, for me, um, consumers care. They care more than ever. Yeah. And so I love that, and I want to lean into that. Yeah. Well, I could sit here and talk to you ladies forever. Mm. But we should probably wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so I'm much walk for down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, it was you. a lot of fun for us. I know it was a lot of fun for you. Uh, it's so exciting to be together for Limelight's seventh birthday. I mean, I yeah. can't even imagine what the next seven years are going to be like, and I hope that I'm here to be part of the journey along with you guys because this is such a special treat for all of us. Um, I really believe in the work that we're doing. Um, I believe in the lives that we're changing. I believe in all of you beauty guys watching this. Thank you for being part of our journey with us. We love you. And we'll see you at the next birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully Palooza. Yes. Yes. Palooza. Yeah, see Hopefully you soon. in person at some point. <laughs> yeah. That's all. And I kind of just feel inclined to say, you know, if today is your Lime Life birthday, or maybe today is your Lime Life birthday, picture that today is your birthday and you're blowing out the candles. What is your wish for the next year? I'd love for you to think about that. Love it. Put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it below. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.